But when you come out of the closet a prayer, and you come from out from beside the dark side of the bed and rise up to start the day, and you step out on the front porch and you look to the east, Know you not that a man should have to give account of the deeds he's done in this life, whether they be good or evil. He'd write them all down. He'd write everything down. You're not going to never get by. Oh, Brother Ward, I just don't like that. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to help you. But I'm telling you, you are in a battle tonight. And this is spiritual warfare. And you're in a battle. And the first thing you have got to do, stay with me now, you've got to identify the enemy. And Paul said that we are aware of his devices. So I can identify him. He's not tricking me. I can feel him. I can see him. I can go beyond the veil. I can see behind the mask. I, hallelujah to God. And God will strip him down and identify him so that I can deal with him. what God might need to strip you down so he can deal with you. If you're willing to let him deal with you. Huh? And so the man of Gadara runs to Jesus and Jesus talks to him just a minute, finish it up. Don't, don't, send, don't, don't, don't send us back to hell before our time. And he says, what's your name? And he made him identify himself. He said, have you and he and this man long enough? Listen to me now, this is very powerful. The man of Gadara was no different than me and you. The man of Gadara was not always a wild man. He was some mama's boy. And he started messing with little cigarettes, little sex, some drugs, little drinking. See, I slipped. I slipped around and done everything behind my mom and daddy's back and I would not accept authority. Wouldn't play football because I wouldn't do what they said. They weren't going to tell me that I had to do whatever it was because I just wasn't going to do it. They said, well, son, you make a good football player. I said, I ain't doing it. You, and so they told me to run and I walked. And when everybody else started walking, I run. I had real authority issues. Now, I know none of you that way. I know y'all have no trouble with authority. Y'all real humble. But I did. Real trouble. But you know what I didn't have trouble with? I really didn't have trouble, Amber. I, I didn't have trouble believing in Jesus. You didn't have to try it because I believed in Jesus all my life. There was never a time in my life that I didn't believe in Jesus. There was never a time in my life that I didn't believe in the Bible. And there was never a time in my life that I didn't believe in the church. But my problem was the timing. I wanted to do it on my time. Believing was not a problem. Loving was not a problem. I can honestly say, I don't think I did not love Jesus. I love my mom and daddy, but I didn't do what they said. See what I'm saying? And I love my wife, and I don't always do what she said. Most of the time. Sometimes. Nine then. 
But see, you've got to identify, you've got to take the mask off. And old Legion and the man, the wild man, as he was known, run naked and, and lived in the tombs and cut itself, suicidal, hungry, and starving, and no order. Huh? Wait a minute now. Stop. No order in his life. His life was all out of whack, and he had no order in his mind. His mind was troubled. Hallelujah. 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 And no order. And when Jesus cast the devil out of him, and Jesus had to go on, there's other work to be done. We ain't got time to just stop. Get the church done, get the carpet done, get the pews done, and then just sit back. There's no time for that. And so this man said, Jesus, I love this. Because this is a mark of true conversion. Jesus, I want to go with you. I want to go with you. He said, son, you just, you just can't do it. You need to go back to your friends that can't believe it. That you got your clothes on. And you got order in your mind. And now order in your life. And now you're kind and gentle and all the attributes that Jesus would have us to be. Now you've got all that and you need to go back and tell them what great things the Lord has done. So the real true sign of conversion is when you want to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow him wherever he goes. Whether he tells me to go to the Philippines, wherever it is he tells me to go, I'm going to follow him. Jesus, I don't want to go nowhere without you. I don't want to do anything. Now, are you paving your own way, really, truly? Come on now. Or are you are you trying to pave your own way and load your own ship and make it up like you want it to be and draw up your own contract? It does not work that way. I love studying Chase, but I, I refuse to let Spurgeon tell me more than this Bible. I love to study Charles Finney, one of my favorite authors, but I refuse to say stay so deep into Charles Finney that my theological, my theology, and my thinking is manipulated by him and not by Jesus. I will read some of that. I love it. I study it. But I'm not going to be manipulated by nothing but just that old plain black King James black and white Bible. And I have read it every way that you can possibly read this Bible. I love this Bible. I've read it from I'm not making I'm not making this up, folks. You're going to have to get involved in the Word. You're going to have to get involved in this Bible. I've read it in chronological order. I've read it from front to back and from back to front. I've read every, any kind of way possible to read this Bible. I've read it every way you can read it. And I still, I've been studying. Sister Doty, I've read this Bible for 45 years. Every day of my stinking life. I've read this Bible, brother. 
And I don't know that I've ever stood against the preacher. Ever. No, no. Unless there was sin involved. I had one call me. He said, Brother Ford, for whose side are you on? I said, that is crazy. Ask me whose side I'm on. There ain't but one side. Joshua said, who ever from the Lord's side? Come over here. I'm on the Lord's side. Not on sides. That's crazy. I'm for what's right. I don't care what your name is. You really don't care where you come from. And don't care how much money you got in your pocket or how broke you are. I'm for what's right. Because right will always come out. And how you do is how you're going to get done. So I tell you tonight, the word for the church is prepare. Prepare. God told Noah, said, Noah, but listen to me. It's getting ready to rain. Man, we ain't never even heard no rain. Well, it's going to rain. You better build an ark. Build an ark on dry ground, yep. Build an ark on dry ground. Prepare. Well, that don't even make sense. Don't matter if it makes sense. That's what you got to do. And you can't just build an ark, Brother Hannah. You're going to have to know it. I know you don't want to do it. I know you want to do it Hannah's way. Now, if you don't know what that means, Jesus said he would that the inside of the cup was clean so that the outside of the cup was clean also. You don't want to drink out of the cup that's been washed on the outside. It looks real good. You look down in there and it molded. You don't want that. He wants the inside clean so the outside can be clean. He told Noah, pitch it on the inside and pitch it on the outside so that all that can meet in the middle and stick together and the thing won't leave. Huh? Unmask the devil that would try to attack you. You're not in this alone. But don't, don't never think that you ain't in some kind of battle because I promise you, you are. It may be the calm before the storm, but you're getting ready to be in a battle. And you are in the battle for your life. You are in the battle for your life. Because it can get down, Chase, to where it's not even got nothing to do with the church. It, it can get down where they got nothing to do with your wife. And I've known her since she was a girl. And I love her. And I love your kids. And I'm a guy. But this thing can get down to where it's just you and I. And you're in survival. Can. And God's called you, you got responsibility to the rest of us so not to drive you crazy. You know, I love, and I'm closing, but I love what a good friend of ours said. Old Charles Grace, some of you might know Brother Charles. He, he said, you know, he said, I might be a better pill to swallow, but if you're going to go to heaven, you got to love me anyway. So that's just kind of the way old Rudy is. I'm not that easy. I don't go down that good. I know that. Just a little on the, like eating beef jerky. I like beef jerky, but you just can't eat a bunch of it at a time. You choke. Uh, that's, that, I mean, I got it. But I can tell you this, I love you. And I hope you're prepared for spiritual warfare. Could we all just find a little place to pray for just a few minutes? Amber, thank you. Just play, pray, play for us if you would. Just come and find you a place to pray. See if there's anything going on you might need to deal with. If you want special prayer, you let us know. We'll pray for you. And uh, thank you very much.